escape. It's time to escape into the world of adventure. Time to forget for the next half hour the four walls of today and escape beyond the horizons of the mind to yesterday and tomorrow. CBS and its affiliated stations present Escape. Tonight, we escape with Rudyard Kipling and the two gentle scoundrels he created in his immortal story, The Man Who Would Be King. The time, sometime before yesterday. The place, the north of India. The man who tells the story, Rudyard Kipling. One Saturday night, it was my unpleasant duty to put the paper to bed alone. It was a pitchy black night, as stifling as night can be in India in June. It was very still, save for the ticking of the clock above my desk, which seemed to shatter the black heat of the night as the hands crept toward 3 a.m. And then from the passage outside my door, I heard voices. That is what be here. Open the door. Who's there? Only us. Who are you? Oh, he don't remember us, Dan. <laughs> that he don't. How could he forget having us stern back of the Jodhpur border? Told the authorities we was impersonating newspaper reporters, he did. Wait. That flaming red beard and that bald head. Why, well, you're Daniel Dravitt and Peachy Carnahan. The same. Well, what do you want? If it's money, I haven't any. If it's a fight... It's simply too beastly hot. You can rest yourself easy, sir, because we've come asking for naught except some information. We've been all over this country, and we've concluded that India isn't big enough for such as Daniel and me. So we're going away to be kings. Kings in our own divine right. What? Aye, we shall be kings. We've signed a solemn contract. Each day up the other, and neither of us to take a look at liquor or women until we become kings. Why, I've never heard of such a fantastic idea. But what is it you want of me? Naught but to look at such maps of Kafiristan as you might have about. Maps of Kafiristan? That's where we've decided to go. But don't you realize that not one single Englishman has ever gone into the Kafiristan mountains and lived to come out again? If you're really mad enough to go there... You're a good deal more likely to become dead men than kings. We shall see. Anyway, I don't believe you have the slightest intention of traveling a mile outside of Delhi. Then you should come down to the Serai marketplace in the morning, down where the caravans leave for the north. Yes, come down to the Serai in the morning and see then if we be liars. <laughs> Who will take the protection of the head? You should not laugh at him, Saib. The witless are under the protection of Allah. Quite so, boy. Who is the fellow anyway? A mad priest, Saib, who has arrived only this morning from Ajmer. Ah, oh, yes, Saib. Come to look at my camels, loaded with toys to please the eye of an Amir. Oh, here now. Go about your business. I haven't any use for toys. These are wondrous toys indeed, Saib. Fit for a king of Kafiristan. What? Good Lord. Daniel Dravitz. Quiet. Come along. I've two camels just beyond the wall here. The blessings of Pir Khan on the gracious Sahib who consents to look at the poor toys of a priest from Ajmer. Over this way. Where's Carnahan? Here we are. Permit me to present my servant, Hazir Mir Khan. At your service, good man. Well, I'll be... <laughs> Do you like our disguises? Do they pass? If they fool this crowd in the Serai, they're probably good enough to get you across the border and good enough to get you killed. Getting killed is no part of the contract Peachy and me drawed up. Although perhaps killing fits in with our plans in a different sense. Feel around underneath the toys there in the camel bags. What? Go ahead. Good Lord. Rifles. Twenty brand new martinis with ammunition to match. And twenty good reasons to make your death certain. Any Pathan of the hill tribes would kill his own mother to get a rifle. Now who would harm a poor mad priest, Sahib? <laughs> 
Ella protects me. Mad is right. Then so was Lord Clive and Rhodes and Bonaparte. Drive out the camels, Peachy. We've a long way to go before we become kings. Oh, hey, huh? As I stood and listened to the camel bells fade away in the distance, I wondered, wondered if it might not be a glorious thing to go to Kafiristan and be a king. <laughs> Three years pass in India, much as they pass in any other land. It grows hot, then the rains come, and then the heat again. Some colonel at a hill station puts down an uprising. A new viceroy comes out from London, and the paper duly records the death of a sultan in Rajputana, and the trees in the courtyard grow a few feet taller. Finally, time in its circle turned up another night, much like the one three years before. Once again, I sat alone in the office, listening to the clock and waiting for some unimportant item to come over the wire from Europe. It was long after midnight when my office door slowly opened. I say, look here, you, you might knock first, you know. Good Lord, man. What's wrong? I, uh, you don't know who I am, do you? No. No, I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, but here, you'd better sit down, old fellow. You're in a bad way. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's a whole year I've been walking. Right here in this very office, we settled it. You sitting right there and giving us the maps. <laughs> you, you've been sitting there ever since. Three years. No. Oh, no. Why, a man couldn't change that much in three years. You're not Peachy Carnahan. Uh, yes. I was king of Kafiristan. Me and Daniel Dravet, real crown kings we was, just as true as gospel. What in the name of heaven have they done to you, Peachy? Peachy? I, I knew Peachy Carner and once. He's a king, wears a real golden crown on his head, so help me, he does. Hey. He's dead now, though. No, no, no. You're, you're Peachy Carnahan. You must pull yourself together, man. Yes. yes. Pull myself. You, you've got to keep looking into my eyes. Then maybe everything will go to pieces. All right. Now, tell me what happened, Peachy. We left the caravan at Jagdala. We struck off into the hills alone. Go on. Weeks it was we traveled, Daniel and me. First, there wasn't no roads, and after a while, no food. But there was always the drums. Sometimes they was close, and sometimes farther off. But most of the time, we could hear them somewhere. Oi, hop! Move along, up. Here now. There's no place to be stopping up with you. I'm fearing it's no use, Daniel. What's got into them? The poor beasts are done in and starved, same as ourselves. They'll go no further. Then we'll go on without them. I've not come this far to die on the side of a mountain. Wait. Look, Daniel. Over the edge of the rocks. What? Oh, men they are. There'll be a score or more of them. One goes ahead of the rest. And naught but bows and arrows. Break out a pair of the rifles, Peachy. Right you are, Daniel. It's now that we start to become kings. Here, here, and some cartridges too. Easy now, Peachy. I'll drop the straggler at the rear first, and then we'll lay a few at their feet. No arm to the one in front. We may need him. Now. Stop him by the old neck. They are Peachy. Hold it, Daniel. Look at them. I 
flat on their blooming faces. The leader is come out alone. Well and good, and we'll go part way to meet him, Peachy, but keep your rifle by. Look at him, Daniel. He be as fair as us, with yellow hair. So he does. Part of the lost tribes, these people are. He stopped. I await your command, O ye who speak in the voice of thunder. Oh, the Lord, Harry. Peachy, we're in luck. It's the old Afghan tongue he speaks. Speak up! Who are you, and whence do you come? I am High Priest, and the chief of the village of Bashkai. A journey of only a few heartbeats. This Bashkai, how many people? They are numbered in the thousands. There are more villages in the hills? More than a man has fingers and toes. Hear that, Peachy? Is our kingdom made to order. And you, you're going to take us to Bashkai. Do you understand? I understand the voice of thunder that you speak. Oh, he's a smooth one, Peachy. He knows a thing or two. <laughs> What's your name? Mazur Khan Jagdalur. That's too long. What shall we call him, Peachy? He has the look about him of an old soldier and friend of ours. Billy Fish. So he does. We bestow a new name on you. From now on, you will be Billy Fish. As you command, I obey. All right. Put this on your drums. Tell them two kings have come out from the mountaintops. Two kings that speak in words of thunder so the earth trembles. Tell them two kings have come to Kafiristan. That you, Peachy? Daniel. Why be you sitting here in the dark? I've been thinking. A man has to stop and think sometimes. About anything special, Nanyan? Look at them, Peachy. Look at their blinking campfires a-gleaming in the dark like the jewels in a crown. Aye, Daniel. You've done a fine job for sure. All 23 villages you joined together as one. Tis the army you trained to be thanked for it. Two thousand men with a fair knowledge of bearing arms. Some's a bit green at it yet. They're ours now, every man, jack, woman, and child. We own them, body and soul. Aye, we're kings now, Daniel. Not proper kings yet, but we will be. Sooner than you think, Peachy. How's that? Billy Fish told me something today that fair amazed me. These people know the craft. You mean they're Freemasons, Daniel? It ain't no wise possible. So help me, it's gospel true. He give me the grip and everything. It's old, the craft is, older than the memory of man. And up here in the hills, they've been preserving it all these years. Why, some of the high priests know up through the fellow craft, but they don't know the third degree. See it, Peachy? They don't know the third degree, but we do. Daniel, what is it you're fixing to do? Do? We're going to be proper kings. We're going to get them... Going and coming now. I'm going to turn the whole country into one grand lodge, raise some of the priests to third degree, and for me, I'll be the grand master of Kafiristan. Oh, but you ain't got the right to. We never been officers in no lodge. Right? What's a king got to do with asking for a right? Oh, I'm against it, Daniel. It's no good to go fooling around with the craft. Ah, you talk like an old woman. The thing will work, I know it will. We'll make it a blooming ceremony. Regular aprons with the symbol and the marks. All of us, Peachy. The kings of Kafiristan. Everything is prepared, Master. And the priests and the people wait. Well, they don't have to wait much longer, Billy. Here now, Peachy. How do you like my apron? It's a wondrous sight for fair, Daniel. Made of white ermine skin it is, and the master's mark with emerald studded. The mark? You know the meaning of the mark? That I do. What's got into you, Billy? Not. But tis a thing that's passing strange, master. Strange and rubbish. Come along now. Ready, Peachy? Right with you, Daniel. Then out we go. Onto the temple steps. We'll give them what for. Knock their blinking eyes out. That's what we'll do. Look at them, Peachy! Right down on their blooming knees and yelling their full heads off. Oh, it's a good thing to be a king, Daniel. The mark! Behold! The mark! Tis a sign! The promised ones have come! (laughs) 
Here now. What's wrong with the priest, Billy? It looks like trouble, Daniel. No. Stand where you are, master. They recognize the mark. That great stone in the floor. Why do they turn it over? Wait. It's the same! He bears the mark! You promised me! Let go! Speak up, Billy Fish. What's the meaning of it? See for yourself. Look, Daniel. Carved on the back of the stone. It is the master's mark, all right. And the same as the sign you wear. Only a few of the priests have known of the hidden mark on the stone. What does it mean? The many who have doubted you were a god doubt no longer. And you, Billy? What do you think? I, master. I think that now it is the time for these. Daniel! Golden crowns! Aye, how they glitter. Fit for the brow of a king. Tis what we came for. Here now, put them on. We'll crown ourselves in our own right. <laughs> Listen to them. You know something, Peachy? We come here to be kings, and that we are all right. But blamed if we ain't a couple of blooming gods to boot, with a million people bowing on their knees before us. Well enough, Peachy. So it was gods you became as well as kings. But then, what happened? What became of Daniel Dravot? Dravot? I knew Daniel Dravot once. He's a king now, Daniel is. Where's a golden crown? Carmen was with him. Peachy, try to pull yourself together. I, uh, I'll try. Now. You became kings, you and Daniel. Kings of all Kafiristan. He was a fine figure, Daniel was. With his red head wearing that golden crown. Kept himself aloof from the people, so to speak. And when he walked before the temple, the fair crawled on their stomachs to worship him. But what happened, man? Happened? Well, I figure mostly it was winter coming on. The winds were starting up, and the clouds was blowing down from the north. Oh, it could blow beastly cold, that winter wind. Hey, who's out there? That you, Billy? Confound it anyway. Here now, what's this? Brought you food, master. Stew of the wild sheep with curry and rice. Up off your knees, girl. Bring it inside. Thank you, master. Uh, place it there. Hmm. Now, you're a well-favored wench. I do not understand. Why were you crawling on your knees? It is a fitting way to approach the god of Kafiristan. What's your name, girl? Maruma Fenja. Maruma? You married? It, it has not yet been my happy fortune, master. Are you afraid of me? You are a god. I mean, how do I seem to you? Do you find me pleasing or, or what? Your face more wondrous than the noonday sun. And your look, the look of eagles. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, very well, you may leave now. Thank you, Master. Hmm. Marrow, eh? Peachy! Peachy! Is you calling me, Daniel? Oh, the food's here, eh? Good. Mark that wind outside. Winter's about due to strike and fill the trail with snow. There'll be little moving about afore spring. Right you are. Peachy, I've decided to take a wife. But you can't do it, Daniel. We made a contract. That was till we was kings. Well, kings, we've been many months now. Oh, but it's no good. I tell you now, I, 
I'm against it. Against it? You was against using the craft, too. But look what it done for us. Oh, but this is different. Billy Fish will tell you no, too, the same as I do. Billy Fish, huh? Who's the king here, him or me? My mind's made up. Three days from now, I shall have me a wife. And you can put it on the drums and tell every blighter out there in the hills. The kingdom of Kafiristan is going to have a queen. Keeping her, Peachy. They should have brought her in here half an hour ago. I don't know, Daniel. How about you, Billy Fish? You put them up to stalling off deliberate like? Certain preparations must be made, Master. She's across the court with some of the priests. Maybe they're trying to hearten her up a bit, Daniel. She thinks she's going to die, you know. Die indeed. Why, I'm only. Master, it is against the laws of heaven for a woman to marry a god. I'm not a god. I'm a man. You know that by now, Billy. No. And I should not want to think so, Master. But either way, this can mean only trouble. I beg you to reconsider. And I beg you to shut up, Billy. I'm through waiting. I'm going over there. Master, please. We've got to go with him, Billy. And I'm thinking it's going to mean trouble. How many men can you defend, depend on? No more than 20 with rifles. Most of my men are in Bashkai. Then what shall we do? We shall have to make a run for it, I fear. We might be safe in Bashkai. Come on now, you buckling fool. Bring out the girl. Well, now, that's better. Here, girl, this is no way for a bride to behave. A smile now. And give us a kiss. Oh! The wench has bitten me. Bloodbuster, don't let them see the blood. Look! See the blood! What is this, Brock? Mr. It's too late. Mark Daniel, they're coming with knives. They can't do this. I'm the king. You've got to run for it, Master. Oh, come on, Daniel, come on. Come back and beat their blasted heads in. That's what I'll do. Oh, sure, Daniel. We'll be back all right. How much further, Billy? Uh, only a short way beyond this ridge, Master. Well, so far, so good. Uh, last them blooming drums are stopped. We're at the top, Daniel. The right good climb it's been. Oh, wait. Look. It seems the drums have come before us, Master. Cut off. No less than a thousand of them standing there quiet like, with them wicked long knives in their hands. There'll be no getting past them, Daniel. No. We are done for. Go back, Billy Fish, and take your men away with you. Go with him, Peachy. It's me they want. I did it. Me, the king. No, Dan. I'm sticking with you. Billy Fish, you clear out. I am your friend. I stay with you. You're a good man, Billy. Maybe come in now, Daniel. Peachy. Forget it, Daniel. I forgive you freely and fully. Then let them come. There'll be one thing they can't change, Peachy. We've been kings. Kings in our own right. Kings of old Kafiristan. open poor Billy Fish like a blooming hell in they did. There in the snow and the rocks. Good Lord, man. But you, Peachy, you got away from them. Like no way did I get away from them. They had us for fair, all right. Strung me out on a tree. Drove nails right through my hands, they did. See? 
But I fooled them all right. Because morning came. I wasn't no wise dead. And then I made them think I'd lost my senses. <laughs> oh, I was afraid to harm me because I was protected by Allah. They cut me down then. And after a while, they let me go. You poor devil. But what of Drabbit? What happened to Daniel? Daniel. Daniel's the king. He wears the golden crown. But now, what happened to him? He's never left me. All them long months walking on the road back, he kept me safe. The mountains, they danced at night. But Daniel held up his hands and Peachy came along, bent double. I'd never let go of Daniel's hand. Not Daniel's head that they gave me in the temple as a present. It's with me now. Here. In this bundle. You knew old Daniel's. Him that was a monarch once. Look at him now. you've seen that we was really kings. I'll be on my way. You'll, you'll pardon me, sir? I let him go. There was little else to do. He was only hours away from his death. I sat there and stared at the bundle he had left lying on my desk. Stared as the pale shafts of dawn struck fire in the red beard. Stared at the golden crown, sitting too large and heavy upon the wrinkled, mummified head of Daniel Dravot. The man who would be king. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight's story, Rudyard Kipling's The Man Who Would Be King, was adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield and featured Raymond Lawrence as Peachy, Eric Snowden as Daniel Dravitt, and Herbert Rawlinson as Kipling. Musical effects were created and conducted by Cy Fewer. Next week, CBS and its affiliated stations invite you to escape in Operation Fleur de Lis, an episode from the files of the OSS. And so, good night, until a week from tonight, when again we invite you to escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Escape. Escape tonight to occupied France and the underground. The Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations presents Escape, a new series of programs of which this, the second, is Operation Fleur de Lis, written and directed by William N. Robeson. <laughs> Thank you.
Today, the 14th of July, the people of a free France celebrate the anniversary of their escape from the tyranny of the kings of Versailles. 158 years ago today, the people of Paris stormed the Bastille and let loose the French Revolution. The torch of liberty set a fire that day, never burned more fiercely than during the years when France was occupied by the Nazis. We escape tonight to occupied France, from which three years ago there was no escape. You can call me Duke, but don't use my right name. I might want to go back to France someday. And there are a lot of people in the world that wouldn't understand that what I did was justified in a war. No, I don't have any regrets. Moral ones, that is. It isn't what I did to Rene that keeps me awake at nights. It's just the memory of her. There isn't much about her in my official report on Operation Fleur de Lis. But then it isn't customary to include descriptions of slim, sunburned legs and wide, deep brown eyes in a military document. And anyway, she was only an incident in the operation, even if she became somewhat more important to me. Operation Fleur de Lis began like all the others in the grubby, undistinguished house in London, which was the headquarters of the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, otherwise known in various parts of the world as screwballs, cutthroats, spies, cloak and dagger boys, and American underground agents. Gentlemen, Operation Fleur de Lis is planned to assist the advance of our forces once they've secured a beachhead in Normandy. Is that where we're going in, Major? That is one of the possibilities, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. You will jump over Grandmont in northern France, here on the map. You have to set up roadblocks on these three state highways. Here, here, and here. Uh, there is an underground contact near Grandmont, sir? Yes, Alcine Duton. He's leader of the local Maquis. He's expecting him. Mm. In addition, you have to block these railroad lines entering and leaving Grandmont. These operations are to coincide with the advance of our ground forces. If they land in Normandy. If they land in Normandy. You will plane tonight at 2,100 hours and will drop over your objective at, oh, I should think, approximately 2,230. Any questions? Uh, no, I don't think so, sir. Well, yes, sir, I have a question. Yes, Lieutenant? How many of us are going on this mission? Just the two of you. Just the two of us. And all we had to do was organize an underground army disrupt the supply lines of a half a dozen Nazi divisions and give support to the entire Allied invasion. Just the two of us. But that's the way the OSS worked. But nobody ordered Hill and me into it. We'd volunteered. I don't know why. Maybe for moments like this one, when you get a B-24 assigned to you as a personal taxi, and there's lots of room to sprawl around after the Bombay. How do you feel? Fine. Scared? Of course I'm scared, aren't you? Me? No, this is a walk. You forget how tough it was when we were at paratroop school at Benning. Yeah, that was real rugged. If the wind wasn't right, you might land in the Chattahoochee and get all wet. And it was always the chance that you'd sprain your ankle coming down too hard. And the sun was so bright on some of those daylight jumps. Whereas we got none of those things to worry about here. A nice pitch black night over France, no sun to blind us, no Chattahoochee River to fall into. Hey, Lieutenant. Yes, Sergeant. Skipper wants to talk to you on the intercom. Thanks. Here, use my cans. Thank you. Duke here. Lieutenant, I'm over your objective. Any signal from the ground? Yes, the one arranged. Four dots, two dashes. Green. Very well. You and Lieutenant Hill move into the Bombay catwalk. I'll open Bombay doors in 30 seconds. Roger. Good luck. Thanks. Sergeant, stand by to dump those supplies as soon as we're clear. Yes, sir. Come on, Ed. This, as someone has said, is it. So soon? Just as I was settling down to a good book. Bombay doors are opening, sir. Okay, Sergeant. All right, Ed, let's check your harness. It's a frightful mess. I just can't seem to do a thing with it. I know, but this is the last party you'll have to wear it on. Okay. How am I? Well, don't look now, but your shoot's showing. Tuck it in. Let's get out on that catwalk. Wow, what a refreshing breeze. And all of France at our feet. You see the signal? That's what I'm looking for. There it is. Over to the left. You got it? Got it. Let's go. You kid. Sure you kid. It helps. But for those 10 seconds while you fall free, nothing helps. You hang on to the ripcord and you count off the seconds and you try not to count too fast. Your hand on that ripcord is the only certain thing in the world as you tumble head over teacups with a wind tearing sound from your ears. And there's only one thought, always the same thought, whether it's your first or your 50th jump. Will the chute open? It does. Yanking at your armpits, knocking the breath out of you, slowing you down, and you swing there like a rag doll trying to get your bearings. First, you make out the horizon. That's where the black becomes darker black where the stars stop. And you wonder about Ed, but you can't risk calling out. And now that you're located where the stars aren't, 
You look for the signal light, and there it is, slightly to the left. So you tug at your shroud lines, spilling a little air to guide you toward it. And it's coming toward you awfully fast. And you hope this particular French patriot has picked out a field free of trees and church steeples. And then you try to remember all the things they taught you about hitting the ground and rolling with the wind and collapsing your chute. Because it's always like this. You always feel like you've never hit the silk before. And then you're down, and you roll just right, and you collapse your chute, and it's second nature to you after all. And then you hear footsteps running towards you. And you remember another important instruction. You whip out your automatic, and you hope your French is good enough to get you by. Qui va? Who is it? Alcine here. Fleur. Delis. Okay, Alcine, come on. I'm the last you have arrived, Lieutenant. So it seems. You have no idea how long we've wished for this moment. Hold it. That's my partner. Come on. Hey, Ed. Ed. Over here, Duke. You okay? My empennage is slightly damaged, otherwise okay. This is Alcine, our contact. Alcine, Lieutenant Hill. Hello, Alcine. Lieutenant, it is a great pleasure to make your acquaintance. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of my countrymen... Yeah, well, let's get these chutes buried and blow this place. Where's your transportation, Alcine? We haven't any. What? Where's the safe house? You might be able to stay at my aunt's. I, I don't think she'd talk. You don't think, aren't you sure? Oh, yes, I'm supremely confident that Where I... are the Germans? They're everywhere. And that is why I'm so glad you're here. Now we can fight again. With your help, we will kill many Bosch. Wait a minute. How many are there in your Maquis? Myself and two others. Just three of you? Oh, my aching back. But now that the Americans are here, we can do anything. Oh, why don't they get these things straight in London? How can we block roads with a three-man Maquis? Three men and an ant who perhaps will not talk. Well, let's get cracking. Duke, you're not going through with this mad venture, are you? What would you suggest? Well, as for me, I'm all for taking the next plane back to London. Another piece of bread, Lieutenant. No, thank you, ma'am. This bone chicken is delicious. How do you call it? K-ration. Supreme. We've had nothing like it since the Bosch came. Yeah, well, you get used to it. And cigarettes, Tante Marie. Cigarettes made of real tobacco. Ah, you Americans have everything. Madame. Alcine, you are kind, you are hospitable, but the comforts of K-ration will not block roads. We need men. We must form a maquis. But we have a maquis. I Look, and my... Alcine, there are three of you and two of us. Sure, we've got guns and we've got ammunition and supply chutes somewhere out in that field where we landed. We've got arms for 50 men. But if we had those men, we still couldn't go to war against a German division. Now, you said yourself, there's at least a division garrisoned in Grammont. What must we do? First, we must organize a maquis. We need men. Can you get them? I can go into the village and talk to my friends. You should have done that a long time ago. Falstein, that would be most unwise. Why? Didn't you know? Alcine is a patriot. He's a deserter from the Vichy army, so he's wanted by the Gestapo. Oh, great. And there's a Gestapo headquarters in Grandma, of course. Of course. Alcine is not one to run from danger. Well, quite the contrary. I can get René to help. Who's René? Alcine's sweetheart. A lovely girl from Paris. Poor thing, she had to come down to the country because her house was bombed out. Let's leave her out of this. But, Lieutenant, she would be most happy to help. Alcine, you've got a lot to learn about guerrilla warfare. You might as well study your first lesson right now. It's short and to the point. No dames. Well, the next day, we collected the supplies which had been dropped with us. And we set up a camp deep in the woods... Hill and I were loaded with French money, so we were able to buy food from the friendly farmers. 